Welcome to another week of Brew Skies Booze News. I am Mike Morgan, beer professor, author, historian, attorney, provocateur. And sleepy. And sleepy. <laughs> what sleep? I've had a, uh, I just came back from a hearing, Brett, I will say. I'm going to fucking brag. Um, because I'm now responsible for two historic districts in the city of Cincinnati. And uh, I just got this uh, Potter's Field Cemetery designated as a National Historic District. It has absolutely nothing to do with beer or anything we're here to talk about. But um, it's been a hell of a week because last night we also got into our publisher mm. our final manuscript and all the nonsense that goes with it. We wrote a book. So we wrote a book and it's coming out in the spring and between the book and this hearing and seven or eight other things this week. It's been a lot of 14 hour days and I am mentally drained as fuck and I've only got like two beers in me. So I apologize, I'm getting kicked off slow. I'm gonna keep drinking and I'm gonna, and I'll be in it. I'll be at it. Uh, Mike, I don't know if it was that long winded introduction yes. or what, but I am sweating in here right now. I'm just dripping. There's some heat pouring onto us and I'm ready to bring the heat for everyone out there listening. Oh man, you just clinked that real hard. Who are you? Like, there's this whole thing. You start out like you gotta say you can't just say you're Mike Morgan, you know, because who know who the fuck cares, right? But you know, you have to like give yourself some uh, no. false uh, false credibility. I'm Mike so Morgan. What? I'm a beer attorney and historian <laughs> and author. Who are you? Uh, Brett Coleman Baker. Owner of Urban, co-owner of Urban Artifact Brewery. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I just I own a brewery. I don't really do anything else. Speaking stuff. I'm an author now. You're an author now. Co-author, yes. really. Yes. So cheers to that. Let's get in the fucking news. It's been too long. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share. You guys know the drill. Smash it. <laughs> support, support us on Patreon. <laughs> Question of the day, which we'll get to at the end. What was your favorite Brew Skies moment of the year? We're at the end of the year. It's time for the lists and all that horse shit. So let us know what your favorite moment was. Mike and I are going to let you know what our favorite moments were when we get to the end. Next week, can we do the worst one? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Uh, all right, White Claw. They're coming out with a non-alcoholic option. It's called White Claw Non-Alcoholic Seltzer. <laughs> Well, the beauty of it is... What's regular is, White Claw? It's like 3% or something? It's 5 I'd give that shit to babies. <laughs> I like how White Claw non-alcoholic seltzer isn't being sold as like a LaCroix alternative. It's being sold into the alcoholic section. Well, that's a smart marketing move. Yeah, I mean, what do you call non-alcoholic water? LaCroix? Water. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> I mean, flavored water. <laughs> yeah, you know... But uh, it's not like LaCroix though. Like if you go to an office and you're crushing LaCroix, no one's gonna question you. But if you're crushing non-alcoholic white cloth seltzers, yeah. people are gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing, Dave? Number one, I think from a marketing standpoint, it, it's like that. I mean, there is that canned water, that uh, death water, whatever the hell yeah, it's called. Yeah, liquid death, yeah. Liquid death, which is a brilliant marketing campaign. You know, the cans are really cool, and it's this whole, you know, Everything toxic, they've done is about uh, marketing, yes. Yeah, because it's just water. Yes. You know, but, but the marketing, the branding of it is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is something to the marketing of a non-alcoholic, alcoholic water brand, rather than just calling it water. There is also that aspect of being able to drink it in a bar if you don't want to drink. Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't, people aren't necessarily going to bust your chops as much because you're not drinking. Because they're not going to notice that you're drinking the same. I mean, I'm going to bust your chops if you're drinking a fucking White Claw. But, um, you know, from a, a packaging standpoint, there's probably a minimal distinction between yeah, non-alcoholic and alcoholic. It looks like the White Claw Surge that they came out with a year ago or so, the high alcohol White Claw. Yeah. It looks just like that. And you're right, there is something to be said for that. There's, It's a difference between like drinking clearly Canadian, you know, flavored water in the bar versus White Claw. One looks a lot more like alcohol, which is the whole point. Right. Um, I know it's completely off topic. We do alcohol news, but can we talk about how much caffeine there is in lemonade these days? <laughs> it's liable to kill you. Who knew the Panera was killing people? <laughs> like, uh, I thought they were, you know, you got like a, 
uh, some decent turkey on a focaccio and there was a salad and whatnot. Panera was the least of the fast food chains that I expected to start killing people. I don't know who's drinking gallons of charged lemonades in a day anyway, but like, god damn, you shouldn't die from it at least. Yeah, Not at least yeah. that day. Diabetes will get you if you're drinking a gallon of lemonade a day. Right. But that was, yeah, that, that also like, uh, oh, I heard, I heard a report, you know, well, people don't expect that much caffeine in lemonade. And I'm like, okay, how about the sugar, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's not act like it's a health drink. That's true. We'll get to more of that stuff later. We actually have a busy week. I should have told you. So, uh, oh, well, well I'm all my dithering. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be a long episode, folks. Buckle in. Strap in. Uh, put on a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Craft brewery closure rates have doubled in the last year. Oh, wow. Well. They've gone from 35 total closures in 2022 to 70. So, not a big deal. How many have opened in that period of time? Uh, hundreds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's not... Uh, the rate's that, still climbing. It's, it's, it's to be expected, and the rate's going to continue to climb because there is oversaturation in a lot of markets. And as we have discussed, for a number of reasons, it is getting more and more difficult to make it as a craft brewery. Yep. It's getting downright impossible, depending on your size at this point. Yeah. And even then, still, it's tough. Uh, famously corrupt Deutsche Bank have come out with a... What? That will never not get a laugh out of me, the, the faux surprise. <laughs> they have come out recently and advised people, don't buy any spirit stocks in 2024. If you're going to be buying stocks, buy beer stocks. Except for one notable exception. Can you guess it? Sam Adams? Nope, Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch? Yeah. Bud Light, stay away from Bud Light. They're still saying stay away from it. Things are looking bad for them. But they said stay away from spirits because things are trending down. Spirits are expensive and it's starting to hit the bottom line. However, beer has been down for a couple of years. So the value buy is really good. And that's where you as the casual investor can benefit from. And I know you with your portfolio of money that you can spend oh, yeah. on, on a monthly basis buying stocks, you know. Well, hundreds trade of thousands of dollars I have in high, <laughs> high price wine. <laughs> We have a lot. We have a lot. We have a lot to get to. And I may have said this before, but I will quickly say the one single thing that I have ever respected about Donald Trump was that and it was really just one of his lawyers. But um, Deutsche Bank sued Trump for being a deadbeat, and not paying his bills. He had the balls to file a countersuit against them for giving him for being stupid enough to give him a loan. And I think it's like the one. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. That's the most brilliant thing that's ever come from that camp. The whole, I think the cause of action is in, in tort law. I think the official cause of action is called what the fuck did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Diageo, owners oh. of Guinness. Uh, very few beer brands, but they own Guinness among others. They're yeah. looking to divest their beer portfolio, except for Guinness. Mm -hmm. Specifically, they're talking about Harp, Smithix, Killian's Irish Red, and Tusker's over in Kenya, where it's big. They're looking to get rid of all that and focus more on spirits. Didn't Miller used to own Killian's? I'm, it's tr it's gone around. Hmm. Wait, did I say Killian's? Because I meant Kilkenny. Oh, Kilkenny. Yeah. Different. I don't know. Whatever. Diageo's cutting spirits, uh, which is interesting because Deutsche Bank is saying, let's get into beer where Diageo's like, fuck beer, we're out. Except for Guinness, because Guinness is the anomaly. It always has been. Always will be. I don't know that I would put a lot of... Uh, I don't know that I would be particularly bullish about any of those brands. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. Uh, further signs of the bourbon bus, as we talked about last week. Yep. Bourbon, bourbon apocalypse. Brown Foreman is down 20% their stock. They were down 2% wow. on the year when they expected to be up 3 to 5%. So that's a huge swing. Investors are like, oh shit, the bourbon bust is coming. I think we're seeing it. And what they go on to say is that Brown Foreman, when they announced the results of the last quarter, how they're down and they're projecting to be down at least 2% through the end of the year, they said that inventories are high, as in purchasing is slowing and that consumer sentiments are heading the opposite direction. People are tired of paying too much for bourbon. Thank fuck. Yeah. So expect bourbon to actually tail down the next probably one to two years and prices to finally come down into reality. It's about time you woke up. As we have said 
<laughs> as we have said, we uh, both, uh, we both to go somewhere else with that. But we both we both like bourbon, but as yeah, we have yeah, said yeah. on the show multiple times, if you've ever wondered if you have paid too much for bourbon, yes, yeah, yes, you have. That actually is the best advice. If you've ever thought, "Am I paying too much for this bourbon?" You are paying too much for that bourbon. It's bourbon. God damn, it's yeah, bourbon. It's, it's supposed to be cheap swill in America. That's the whole point. In other news that is adjacent to Anchor Brewing Company. Yeah. Redwood, Red, excuse me, Ringwood Brewing in England is closing. Now, if you're not familiar with Ringwood. I am not. And if you guys aren't either, they are a historical original cask brewery in England mm -hmm. making beer for hundreds of years. Got bought out by Carlsberg about five years ago or so. Yeah. And Carlsberg announced at the end of this year, this week, that they're shutting it down in a month. So next month, they're shutting down Ringwood, which has been open for hundreds of years, which has been pushing cask brewing, which is very much a historical very style. Very traditional English style. There, There is a whole cult around. Mm -hmm. The only real beer is cask conditioned beer, yes. beer that doesn't have artificial carbonation to it. Yep. So, you know, those people are crazy, and there's a handful of them. But it is a, a very noble, long beer tradition. Yes. And so Carlsberg is just doing, yeah, that, that's the tie-in. Just like Sapporo, uh, more yes. billionaire, yes. greed head assholes that can't possibly have enough money, so they have to destroy culture and history. Yep. Because it only makes money as opposed to hemorrhages money. Yep. And the uh, Ringwood Brewery Yeast is famous. It's historical. It's been sold in the U.S. for a very long time. But it actually led to the New England IPA yeast that's come about. New England IPA yeast are actually descendants of English brewing yeast, and mm. Ringwood Brewing yeast has been very famous within the brewing community since the you know the '80s and Papazian days. Uh, so it, it is truly same, a shame. Same, same way that, that lager yeast really seem to have evolved over a long period of time out of uh, ale yeast. Yes, it, through German, the, the way the, the beer was being aged. Yep, yeah. just a little more expedited than that. But yes, same. Ninety years ago this week. The 21st... Adam, our producer, Adam, is there. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. We can see his faces. I know you guys can't. But he is looking extremely proud and happy that he's lived this long and yeah. continues to produce Who knew? content. It's crazy. Who knew? Well, what also happened is 90 years ago this week, the 21st Amendment was ratified. Mike, can you tell us what that is all about? That is the one that said, remember that amendment we passed where we criminalized alcohol? The 18th. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, let's remember a little bit of the great things that the 18th Amendment gave us. It gave us the destruction of Horace historical vineyards, orchards, and hop yards. New York, which used to be the place to grow hops in the U.S. and still makes great hops, doesn't grow shit anymore. Missouri used to be the number one state in the country for wine. That's gone. Uh, we have the destruction of national historic alcohol brands. We have the ruining of industry in Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Milwaukee that just decimated what jobs and industry was there. It ruined an entire neighborhood in Cincinnati called Over the Rhine. We have the rise of America's sugar addiction. Yeah. We have the rise of organized crime. Creation of organized crime. We have we countless lost. deaths from bathtub gym and government poisoned alcohol to try to rat out people who were drinking booze. We got NASCAR. Did get NASCAR. <laughs> so Prohibition it. was great. Prohibition was fantastic. Here's the thing about Prohibition. In, in the early years of Prohibition, Americans drank 70% less than they did before. So, um, and it took until like the 70s or 80s for Americans to drink as much as they did hmm. afterwards. So, you know, by a metric, Prohibition worked. If all you are counting is a reduction in alcohol consumption, Prohibition was vastly more effective than the modern war on drugs. By a single metric. By one single metric. I'm not saying everything that you just said indicates why it is still a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But we're going through similar discussions right now. Like this week, in the state of Ohio is when legalized marijuana, recreational marijuana is coming in, you know, and everybody's freaking out. Oh my God, this means 10 year olds are going to be high. 
And um, I mean, 10 year olds are already high, but it, it's, there is some validity to the fact that ease and legality of access does increase consumption of certain things. But the trade-off to that is what? Prohibition, war on drugs, the, you know, the trade-offs are worse. So yeah, let's go 21st Amendment, that's what I'm saying. You know, I will have to say another mark in the maybe not so great column of prohibition, if it wasn't for prohibition, we wouldn't have Twisted Tea. Because Prohibition gave rise to NASCAR, and NASCAR gave rise to Twisted Tea. And if it wasn't for NASCAR, we wouldn't have Twisted Tea, and we wouldn't all be talking about this right here, right now. But I think that, more than anything, is what's wrong with America. Yes. It's Twisted Tea. Twisted Tea. God really? damn it, Jim Cook. Do you think it's worse than seltzer? Well, you know who also did seltzer? Was the company that did Twisted Tea! Boston Beer. Which, if you want to hear about more about Boston well, Beer... If you want to listen more, yeah, that, yes, do yes. We 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 have a whole interview with Jim Cook that we did a while back. That's coming out in three segments. Mike just roasts him for ninety minutes. Hey, I, what gives you the right? Yeah, that's Jim the whole. Cook. That's the whole. Like every question <laughs> starts out. Who the what fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Actually, he's a super nice guy. It's very great. <laughs> it's a great interview. Very nice interview. We do, best get, interview. we do get into the history of prohibition and how it impacts America in way interview. more de in way more uh, detail on our Bruce Guys uh, yes. Happy Hour podcast. Yes, so if you do want to know more about the history of prohibition, how it impacted alcohol in America and how it impacted our culture, our theory that we're very sure is correct about sugar and the rise of that and how that's leading to the ultimate downfall of America and not alcohol, that's all in the Bruce Guys Happy Hour podcast. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Um, armed forces are removing the sale of alcohol on base from 10, a, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Where? All across the world. Any base of yeah, armed forces States. in the U.S. and in other countries. If we have a base where our, our troops are at, they can no longer sell alcohol from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And the main reason they say is to eliminate suicides. <laughs> I would say that they're just covering up they're fixing a symptom. They're not fixing the real problem. Here. Right. Yes. Also, damn it, if I was on a military base and it was 12 o'clock, you know, midnight, and I ran out of booze and I wanted to get more, don't stop me. Let me go get some. Let me feel terrible the next day. It's not my fault. I have an AR-15. I can get booze. <laughs> <laughs> The state if we have, uh, it, it's, it drives me nuts. Like I'm not, um, wow. you know, we're not going to, we're not going to. Did gonna, you see the restraint folks? Did you see that? He did not throw that can. He restrained himself. That was a first in Bruce Guy's what? booze news history. Oh, two for two. Man, you put on Although a suit, I did, I you put on a suit and you just start getting all classy. It really pisses me off. I'm not somebody that gets all fucking, you know, go all for the troops nonsense. But um, no, like I support see, the troops. When I see one of those, yes, sure. When I see one of those commercials, on both sides. <laughs> there's good people on both sides. <laughs> Our troops and the people killing them, as long as they're in a uniform. No, I mean, it genuinely, every time I see one of those commercials where, like, you know, they have to raise money to, like, buy artificial limbs for a soldier mm. that got uh, his or her legs blown off somewhere, I'm like, why in the fuck is the government not paying for that? Why is there a nonprofit that has to raise money for that? Yep. I mean, no shit in this country. You send somebody off and, and let them get shot at and whatever the hell else. And they get their legs blown off, and they have to go to a nonprofit to raise fucking money to get artificial limbs. The fuck that. The fact we have the military budget we do, and we don't support the troops as part of that budget is a problem. No. Yeah, Lockheed Martin isn't having to raise money for anything. I have a buddy that just got a job in the missile defense industry, though. Yeah, nice. He's pretty excited. Yeah. Can There's a lot of like Iron Dome code? stuff happening right now, and he's, you know, he's pretty set, so good for him. Does he have a, Shout out, does Nick. he understand the Jewish space laser thing? He's from England, so who knows? Yeah. 
Do they even have Jewish people in England? I think they do. Yeah. I thought it was just gypsies sure. over there. Sure. Anyway, cut that, Producer Adam. Can you cut that <laughs> piece out? The state of Washington is strongly considering lowering the BAC legal limit to 0.05, down from 0.08. They are also, as part of that, looking at reinstituting statewide checkpoints. Oh, for God's sake. I knew you'd have an opinion on the checkpoints thing. First of all, 0 0.05 is stupid. Just say you're going to execute people if they drink and get in a fucking car. I mean, you can't. Uh, it, 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 it's ridiculous. Um, number two, breathalyzers. You look into any of the science of breathalyzers, like all of how breathalyzers work is locked behind a bunch of walls of proprietary information, all of which just locks down the fact that they are not accurate. Just they are not test. legitimate science. And, you know, most states' laws are you, if you get pulled over for a DUI, your two options are, are you guilty or are you guilty? Once the cop has pulled you over, you're guilty, period. Because you either refuse to blow into this, uh, piece of bullshit equipment that isn't accurate that actually violates self-incrimination which is supposed to be in the constitution back when that meant something you know or you're going to be guilty for uh refusing to do it you're going to be guilty either way the, the dui laws are absolutely ridiculous the way they're constructed and the checkpoints um are just absolutely completely totally unconstitutional it's not what the Supreme Court has said, but the Supreme Court is fucking crooked and wouldn't know the Constitution if it bit him in the goddamn ass. You will blow or you will be blown. There is no choice. But yeah, like, I mean, the cop may get blown, but you're, <laughs> yes. Well, this is not a, a lawyer podcast. This is not legal advice. But if I were you, I would just refuse to do anything uh, if pulled over and asked to blow. Yeah, it's but your least bad option. To, you know, play the situation at hand. You I still mean, lose your before. license for a, for a man, mandatory minimum period of time. Hey, Mike, did you know grapes grow most everywhere in the world? Hey, Brad, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are just learning that apparently China grows good grapes. Who would have guessed? So, and good wine could be made in China. There's places besides France and California that can make good wine. Wow. Yep, that's the end of that story because it's fucking dumb. Now, Mike, I oh. know you have opinions on this. Diddy, he's back in the news. Did you know it? Oh, I don't have any opinions. <laughs> well, let me. When did he get out of the news? Who did he rape this week? <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Let me give you the Diddy saga so far before we get into the newest news. In May, Diddy Combs sued Diageo for failure to invest in these De Leon brand. And now what we learned last week is that Diageo has actually made most of the money for Diddy yes. in his own personal pockets to the tune of about $90 million. All and of his great empire of brilliance, the vast majority of it is just lending his stupid Diddy name to some shitty liquor. So Diageo claps back and says, actually, we've given you $100 million for your daily owned tequila brand and you've only invested $1,000. So we're not actually in the wrong here. Then in June, so that was May, in June, Diageo was like, we're cutting all ties with Sean Diddy Combs moving forward. We still have legal obligations that we have to uphold, but we're cutting ties moving forward. That was May, that's for all rape stuff. That was in June. May, May, Dia May he sued them. June, Diageo cuts ties. Then Combs re uh, responded with another lawsuit accusing them of racism. At which point in time, in sure. October 27th, then Diddy files an injunction and basically says that Diageo is interfering with his ability to run De Leon, and he's, Diageo is interfering with his ability to spend their money because yeah. in his contract, he's allowed to spend their money on his brand. Yeah. Then on November 16th, Diddy, ideas. <laughs> Diddy is sued for rape the first time. Yeah. Then on November 17th, Diageo files a court injunction that says, get him off of our brand immediately because he's going to do irreparable harm. Then a week later on November 23rd, he gets sued two more times also for rape. Then December 6th, here's the new news. 
Diageo claimed again that Diddy has turned so toxic and so vile and mean to all of the employees and people in this company that the court needs to immediately remove him from conservatorship over the De Leon brand or they will lose every single cent they put into it and they're gonna lose everything they built where D uh, Diddy put in response, hey, it's my money that you gave me, I have the right to spend it. And that's where we're at now. Basically, it's gotten to the point where $15 million is about to be spent on a campaign for De Leon tequila. And Diddy's plan for this tequila was put his face on every single advertisement. He nice. wants to double down on Diddy nice. being the tequila brand. Yeah. Diageo is like, oh shit, yeah. this guy is a big time rapist, allegedly. Yeah. We need to back away from that as quickly as possible. But they can't. When you can't get your hand on roofies, my tequila. <laughs> it's something that a rapist would say. <laughs> Both sides deny any wrongdoing. <laughs> I have both sides kill themselves. <laughs> you know, in the match, in the whole, in the, in the, yeah. Like, I wasn't sure if there's any more you had to put into that. I mean, it's kind of all self-explanatory. If you can't make up your own mind about it, Diddy at this point in time, and Diageo, really? I mean, like, Diageo. Come on. They're, they're not any better in this. We're not defending a global corporate company. Well, don't get I, us don't wrong. I don't know that. Um, are they complete pieces of shit whose economic destruction I highly support? Absolutely. Are they less bad on like a personal evil basis? I don't know. I think there may be a level of uh, evil and less evil going on in that one. Well, you know, here is a um, here's a point in the corporations aren't people uh, a column. Corpor what? Uh, That's an American. Corporations as an entity doesn't have one single penis and can't rape a single person. No, they rape like lots of people simultaneously. It's whole fantastic. swaths of countries. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Whole yeah. lower classes of people. Yeah, but not a single person. No, not a single person. Speaking of Diddy. Tequila is actually taking over the hip hop scene as the number one spirit of choice. See, they've been underpaying that motherfucker. And cognac is actually the whole point is cognac's freaking out because cognac, yeah, has, cognac been has been the, been the thing since hip hop was created in the '80s. Cognac has been the thing due to a long history of positive support of the Black American communities. Cognac has so there were, there were some of those major brands that really kind of. Um, Targeted Henny, uh, black Hennessy, community. and Remy. Black yeah, early yeah. On. yeah. In the fifties and sixties, actually. Is there cognac. I love cognac. It's great. I haven't had cognac in uh, shit a long time. I was in a liquor store the other day. I thought I should pick a bottle up because I don't know that I've had it since. You know, I might not have had it since the since I was in my twenties. It's really good. Good, good is good. Obviously, good is good for everything. That's a whole. If you learn anything from us, it's it's good is good. If it gets drunk, whatever. Anyway. How bad could it be? Mike, I have some tips for you from the National Institute Against the Abuse of Alcohol. Oh. And here's some booze I've tips for you during heard. a boozy time of year. Yeah? One, don't alcohol is fun, but sometimes you don't realize how much you drink. Oh, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> me too, actually. <laughs> Every Friday, actually. Coffee doesn't sober you up. What? <laughs> of course it doesn't. Mike, I haven't thought that since I was fucking 12. Mike, just because you're not slurring your words doesn't mean you can drive. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> if you're drunk... No, absolutely. I mean, back to my point, actually. If you have had a beer, you, you're, you can't legally drive. You can be completely sober and fail a breathalyzer. Mike, if you're drunk, you still need to wear a coat outside when it's cold. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> and, There's uh, a thing actually that alcohol actually lowers your body body temperature. It does. So it makes which is you why feel less bulletproof. It, it makes especially you feel like liquor cold. makes you feel warm, you know, because you have that warming flavor. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it actually increases your chance of dying of hypothermia. Yeah. And uh, once you stop drinking, you're still drunk for potentially hours. You know, not only is that true, but actually back to the breathalyzer, 
after you stop drinking, your um, breathalyzer results as me your your, a your blood alcohol content as measured by a breathalyzer will continue to increase for about an hour and a half after you stop. So you will actually mm. blow higher as a result of stopping drinking, having a couple of coffees, some water, I'm gonna be responsible and I'm gonna head home, you will blow higher than if you just tear straight out of the bar. Well, like we said, blow or be blown. Mike, there's a new bourbon, and I know you're gonna to wanna to buy it. I hope it's really expensive. It comes from England, but it was made- Bullshit! It First was, of all, bullshit. I know it's not a law. I know that they failed to ingrain it in legislation, but if it doesn't come from Kentucky, it's not bourbon, period. Well, there's a twist to this story. It was made in Kentucky, mm -hmm. aged for six years in Kentucky, put on a ship, shipped to England, where they aged it for another year, and then they packaged it in England, and then shipped it back to sell it to Americans. And it's British bourbon. Would you buy it? No. <laughs> would you buy it if I told you it was only $69.95 a bottle? I, I would punch the clerk in the face. <laughs> would you buy it if I told you it was named after a horse that was sick and apparently got better after it took a shot of bourbon? Because <laughs> yeah. that's the story. <laughs> It's so stupid. It's so fucking dumb. I hate it so much. You know what I would buy? You remember that? It's like, it's been a while A back. musket to shoot those fucking redcoats in yes. the face? Yes. <laughs> yes. A 1700s musket to just shoot those fucking people. <laughs> there was a... It, it's been quite a while now. You know, you don't get a lot of those, like, great Kentucky Derby stories anymore because all the horses are owned by like Saudi princes. But, um, so, you know, oh, right after I raped and murdered, uh, you know, my horse won. Oh, that's a great story. But a while back, you know, there was like this random collection of bros in New Jersey, just like middle-class guys that went in and bought this horse, this like glue factory horse for, you know, $20. And it, one, uh, I think I'm on the Triple Crown, actually. It's been a while. I forget the name of the horse. I don't care. Seabiscuit? No, it was after that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they should have had a bourbon. But it should have been like a well bourbon. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, like this a is solid... some cheap-ass bourbon, but it's yeah. going to blow your socks off. It's like Echo Springs. It's like a solidly, yeah, for the price, sure. Old, old Crow? Yeah, sign me suck. up. Yes. Oh, yeah. Glue right. factory bourbon? Yes, I'm in. You should probably chase it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's good enough. It'll get you drunk. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I know there's been a lot of talk about things that could be a trigger warning for a lot of people out there. If you made it this far <laughs> and you were surprised by this stuff, I truly am sorry, but <laughs> this has been a crazy week of news and we're going to finish it with our non-alcoholic story. Mike, who the hell's Kevin McCarthy? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy is the recently ousted Speaker of the House. The one that was, was, still is, and remains a complete ballless, spineless, principleless piece of shit, and who, compared to the present Speaker of the House, looks like Abraham fucking Lincoln. And he is now about to be your latest ex-congressperson because um, apparently even remotely sane people, even principalless weasels, can no <laughs> longer continue to serve in the American Congress. You have to be batshit crazy. That's Kevin McCarthy. All right. And there's your non alcoholic story of the week. Kevin McCarthy. He's quitting Congress because he's a spineless, ballless piece of shit. Yeah. Well, and because Congress has become a bastion of lunatics. Well, this has been a very weirdly bad week of news as far as, like, feel-good goes. Sure. So what's in this with a positive note? Mm -hmm. Mike, what's been your favorite moment of Bruce Guys in the last year? 
Was I've it when had, Adam waxed your back? I've had several. That one was nice. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, I think the Cook interview actually took place last year, although it's just coming out. That was a very nice, positive, professional kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, to me, you know, in part because all the rest of you people hated it. But I loved when we did our stupid little kid rock thing and I got to shoot Sapporo cans and these guys filmed that and the, the just the, the the videography on it is spectacular. When Mike says you guys, he means our producers are sitting behind the camera, yeah. behind you guys right now. What he really means is that he loves the response you guys all get and he feels vindicated about it. And if you wanna see it and you haven't, it, it's called A Fistful of Sapporos on our YouTube channel. Check it out, it is pretty. It is pretty good. Was, the last shot is amazing. Uh, I think my favorite moment was just seeing the progress we made in this physical space, yeah. which doesn't mean a lot for you, the viewer, but like this bar exists because we did work this year. Booze News, AKA Barstool Perspective, AKA whatever name we made up, whatever, it exists because of this bar and because we got this space and we're doing stuff and that makes me feel good things are happening. Before the end of this year, we're gonna get Dan. Like, Dan doesn't like to move the camera because mostly, you know, lazy and shit. But um, we oh, gotta do a, uh, we gotta do a, we'll clean up, we'll do dishes. But we gotta give viewers, you know, a tour of the bar. This bar is massive. Oh, that's a good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. Well, that's it. We love you, people. Left lane is for passing. Good drink, good booze.